Welcome to the Libertarian Counterpoint. Uh, counterpoint. <laughs> I still like Libertarian Conspiracy better. Uh, on my left, your right, uh, a longtime host of uh, Libertarian uh, Counterpoint, uh, Richard Fields. And um, on my right, your left, Zach Kincaid, who's uh, launching uh, an affiliate Libertarian organization in uh, Yolo County, trying to get that up and running. We'll have... Uh, We'll have contact information for him on the website, folks, and hopefully attached to the to the YouTube videos and all the rest of them. Um, so we're going to talk about some varied subjects this evening, and the first one we're going to talk about is uh, there was an article on Yahoo. Yes, it still does exist, folks. I I, I look so at some of their sports stuff every once in a while. Um, the National Park Service is trying to hide the world's tallest tree from visitors. And they have some reasoning for, well, they think they have some reasoning for doing that. Zach, you want to take the lead on this one and let us know what's going on? So their biggest, they, they start shut down access to it in 2006. And uh, their biggest complaint was with uh, soil compaction from foot traffic out through there. Um, which, I mean, I could kind of see to a point. Uh, and then they were talking about how because it's become a spot where it's been, like, be retaken by the wilderness, now you have to bushwhack your way into that, so then you're damaging the, the area. Mm. And then they got approached about building a, a pathway out to it, and uh, they decided that eventually there would be a taller tree than the world's tallest tree and so they couldn't spend our the taxpayer money on building a pathway out to the tallest tree when eventually it won't be huh yeah. well ho hold on how <laughs> if it's tallest and it's 700 to 800 600 to 800 years old and uh it's 380 feet high how is another tree going to catch up to it unless you give it uh, some nitrogen fertilizer or some plant food or something like that, or unless you stunt the growth of the... Uh, so anyway, what it is is BS, folks. I'm well, calling BS I, I mean, the, uh, the, the excuse, another tree is going to eventually be taller, that's, that's a forever excuse because yeah. every tree will eventually... Uh, be shorter than the existing tallest tree. So it's just a BS excuse. Uh, the Park Service can find, this is the, what, Sequoia National Park up, in, up on the coast? Mm. Uh, is it Sequoia? No, it's whatever. The, the, the Redwoods, National, Redwoods. Redwoods National Forest up on the, on the uh, North, Northern California coast. Uh, the reason you have a park, a national park, is so that people can appreciate nature. And the purpose of the National Park Service, I thought, was to make natural wonders more accessible. I spent a lot of time in national you parks. You silly, I spent a lot of time boy. In, in, You're in, such a silly in, boy. In national forests. I spent a lot of time, uh, you know, climbing the mountains of California. And guess what? There are I know. trails. I know. I followed and left some of them. There are trails, either, either uh, bushwhack trails, you know, use trails, so-called, or maintain trails all over the national park system. And where soil compaction is a problem, you build wooden ramps uh, and tell people you can, you can you know, go out and visit this tree, but you have to stay on the wooden platform. Like they do in Yosemite and the Meadows. Anywhere, like anywhere. Like they anywhere. do anywhere on the coast. And it's not, yep. and you know, building a, a path to a tree, a trail to a tree, and then building a wooden platform around the tree, that's not a high cost operation. I mean, you know, you could build that for maybe one one thousandth the cost of the park headquarters. It's 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 de minimis. No, way less than one one thousand. And 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 you know, we're I, nobody m more interested in reining in government spending than I am. But if you're going to have government spending, at least spend it for something that people actually want, which is to see the world's tallest mm. tree. I right. would like to see the world's tallest tree. So you know, this is just. There's got to be a hidden agenda. I'm not sure hidden, exactly hidden what it is. The agenda is that people in the Park Service believe that their job is to keep people out of the national parks. 
and to keep the national parks untouched until they burn down so they can blame it on global warming so that they can initiate oh, even you're, you're more. Oh, you're such a cynic, Don. Well, even if, even if man-made global warming is true, and let's just assume for the next 30 seconds that it is, then, um, you know, the idea that, that a 1% increase in temperature over the course of the next 50 years is going to have more Im impact on forest fires than, than having 122 million dead trees and a tree density that's three times what it was when John Muir walked through the forest is crazy. One degree difference, 122 million dead trees, double to triple the tree density. Which one is going to have the greatest effect, folks? If you guys believe it's global warming, let me go to your house lower the temperature by one degree and throw gasoline on it and see if I can get it to burn. It's illogical. So back to this, their, their mandate now is to keep people out of the forest. Yosemite, uh, there's a little thing on it uh, called Half Dome uh, that will handle a couple thousand people a day easily to hike to the top. If you can get to the top, it's a 19 mile round trip hike. It's a tough hike. The limit? The permit limit on that thing, 250 people. When I first moved to California, there was back, no limit. Back in the back in the early uh, 1990s, mm. uh, I climbed uh, Mount Whitney, mm. and there were two huge camps along the way, huge camps, and you know if you got a permit, you could stay in one of those camps, mm. and if you were willing to make the entire climb, which is about a 20 mile, 20 and a half mile round trip, in one day, you didn't even need a permit. You just mm arrive at, the, at, the, at the Whitney Trailhead, climb up and walk up, walk back down, no big, no, no problem. Now you have to stand in line or get in the phone line or the phone queue on January 1st or whenever to get a limited number of permits to climb Mount Whitney. And like Yosemite and Half Dome, they're limiting the number of people that can climb to way, way below what the trail can mm. easily handle. Or either one and the, of those camps And, and the camps have been essentially eliminated. Okay. I think where there used to be, uh, you know, several hundred uh, camp uh, campsites, now there may be uh, maybe a half a dozen at mm. one of them. Same thing in Yosemite. There, you, there was one whole campgrounds removed. They will add no tents, no cabins, no hotels, no campgrounds, no parking. Uh, and uh, pretty soon there, you, you have to uh, get uh, basically into a lottery to enter the park, the park unless you have lodging. So the Park Service basically is killing access to parks. And, and we and beat that know, one up you for quite a while. And, and the, the, the arguments are environmental, but really they're elitist arguments. They're saying yeah. we want to make the parks available to us, uh, you know, bona fide green people mm. and keep the hoi polloi out because, hey, it's too important of a resource mm. for uh, everybody mm. to enjoy. It needs to be res reserved I'll, for, I'll for us, that, for us that in the elite. I'll bet you that if uh, uh, the, the board of directors of Earth First showed up at Yosemite and wanted to hike Half Dome, that they'd have no problem doing <laughs> it. I'll bet you. I'll bet you, folks. All right, have we beat that one up enough? Yeah. Silly to have the world's tallest tree to keep people, but keep people from looking at it because because you're an elitist bunch of radical greens running the park service. Let's talk about uh, somebody getting killed, and uh, the 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 man that was killed is uh, is is pretty much evil. But uh, I would raise the question that us uh, using a drone to kill somebody in a in a foreign country. Uh, and probably a whole bunch of innocents that were in the blast pattern of that drone is also an evil thing. Richard, do you want to talk about that for a second? Yeah, we're talking about Zawahiri, who yeah. is uh, the second in command to Osama bin Laden. Yeah. And beside the fact that we're, what, 20 some years <laughs> too late, mm. uh, I mean. Statute of limitations hasn't run out well, on Well, yeah. On, uh, and, 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 and besides <laughs> the fact that this is extrajudicial uh, yeah. killing, and this is something that, you know. Zawahiri was never he, faced a court of law or yeah. anything like he was, that. He was convicted in absentia. I don't yeah. know if there's ever a trial. Was there ever a trial? No, I don't no, no, of course not. Of no? course not. Mm -hmm. He's basically uh, executed. And we're not in active hostility with Afghanistan right. anymore since we supposedly, well, we left in shame <laughs> under the Biden administration a few months ago, uh, you know, leaving behind all of our munitions. I mean, it was, it was a, 
Mm. Yeah, we should have got out of Afghanistan. We should have got out. Of, we should have never went there in the first place. Mm. But leaving our, our, you know, billions of dollars worth of, uh, of uh, weapons and there airfields and tanks and is, anti was, was absolutely and insane. artillery and they brought the military out before they brought out the uh, civilian population that was at risk. And I'm talking about the uh, Afghans that cooperated with the United States by being interpreters and uh, guides and, and, and you know a anybody that cooperated with the U.S. Uh, you know the Taliban has their uh, name and a, and, a, and a mark on their back. Those people got left behind. The military left before anybody was able to leave. We had people in Afghanistan clinging to the bottom of uh, aircraft as, as they were you know, taking off. It was, it was an absolute disgrace. Mm. Clown show all that aside, on top of that. All that aside, Zawahiri, bad guy, yeah. Will we at war with uh, Afghanistan anymore? No. Uh, and uh, other than the Biden administration looking for something to change the subject from inflation and recession. And dementia. And dementia. There was you know, really nothing going on there. It was a, you know, a good chance for uh, Biden to say, hey, we got a bad guy. Sort of like when Obama said, uh, we got, uh, we got uh, uh, Osama, we got a bad guy. Let's, uh, let's, let's, let me go sideways on Osama bin Laden. I, kn I know a lot of special forces guys and a lot of special ops guys and, and uh, I'm not going to mention any of their names or how I know them or how long ago I've known them or anything else. But th one of them just brought this up. He said, so there's a six foot six guy who needs dialysis every single week. Every single dialysis machine in the, in the world has got a serial number. You can find out where they all are. Uh, you know he's not getting on a plane and going to Paris for dialysis. Uh, what makes you think that we didn't know exactly where that guy was for 15 years, 10 years, whatever? Mm -hmm. um, you know, if, if our elite intelligence organization couldn't find a six foot six tall guy who needed dialysis once a week, for how many years was he supposedly in hiding? No, 15, 15? Like that, yeah. yeah, then we shouldn't be allowed to, you know, hold up a traffic sign, much less hold 10 million, 10,000 nuclear weapons in our arsenal. So anyway, I mean, this is just, it's a joke, it's a horrible joke, it's, it's a political <sighs> sleight of hand at the worst, and you know, everybody knows that we can kill people with drones, we do it all the time. We kill 10 times as many innocent people as people that we're intending killing every time we do it. And yeah, it's 90%. Yeah, ninety percent of the people yeah. killed are, are and they no are longer innocent. record the number of drone strikes. Yeah, they used to be public information. Yeah, but uh, but the last administration canceled that. Yeah, and the current ones found that that's a good thing. Yeah, yeah, we we'll just start worrying when they're doing drone strikes in the United States. That's uh, uh <laughs> completely unconstitutional. But they've broken all those law, all the rest of the laws. So why not these? How how much time do we want to spend on this one? Think we're done with that one? You're, done you're, with that you're, one? you're the you're the MC. Well, I don't know, but I, I want you guys to be excited, not too excited, you know, <laughs> but a little bit excited. Yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna MC down to uh, uh, something that's that's pretty scary. Um, you know, during the lockdown, people were taking all the money that the government was printing and handing directly uh, to the masses while they weren't paying their student loans and weren't paying their rent, um, and they were making 1.6 times the wages they were making while they were working, and, and putting it in the bank, putting it in the stock market, buying toys, and paying down their credit card debt, which is why we now have inflation, because there was, there was way too much money chasing uh, way too few goods and services. But now um, there's a surge in credit card debt as people are trying to live their lives uh, uh, after lockdowns while coping with inflation. So uh, once again, the genius of the people that we let stay in office, folks. Richard, you want to talk about that? Yeah, for first, first of all, we have to be really, feel really free clear. To jump in. Yeah, yeah, jump in at any time. We have to be really clear that this is not a Republican or a Democratic era. It's the duopoly. It's, it's a duopoly era. It started under Trump. Yeah. Well, it people, started under people, Obama. No, no, I'm Obama talking about the. I'm talking money. about the the, uh, the pandemic lockdowns. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. And, and all of that started under Trump. 
He's yes. the guy that started the lockdowns. He's the guy that actually believed Fauci when Fauci said uh, we need to lock down the country for, what was it, two weeks or two something? Weeks. Uh, now, three weeks. Now said three weeks. Now Burks, we'll the, the head of the, the NI, uh, the, the uh, public, the NIH. Uh, NIH, she has written a book admitting that they lied to Trump, saying that, that this was go only going to be for two weeks to get him to get on board. And once, it was, once he was on board with the lockdowns, in order to save face, given rising uh, infection levels, he had to say he had to double down and continue to do it. Mm -hmm. Now I don't give I don't I don't uh, give him any. Uh, Trump was a fool to listen to these uh, these uh, fascists, mm -hmm. uh, to use a kind word, but he's the guy that started the whole oh, yeah. the yep. whole thing as far as uh, as far as uh, uh, unemployment compensation bumps, as far as uh, stimulus pay. You know, payments to you know, uh, non-repayable or non uh, loans to, to to businesses that didn't have to be repaid. Basically, giving money to bi to small businesses and large businesses mm -hmm. and very large businesses. He's the guy that started it. Mm -hmm. Now Biden doubled down and did even more after the pandemic was pretty well shown to be not that big a deal anymore. Mm -hmm. He continued it. Now eventually it, wi it wound down and 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 uh, mm -hmm. all of that money that was sloshing around, you know. As Milton Friedman said, inflation is always a monetary uh, phenomena. Without more money a entering the economy, given uh, you know a relatively constant velocity of money, in other words, the the, mo the, 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 the speed with which money uh, changes hands, mm -hmm. if, if velocity remains constant, more money, more inflation. It just it's just you know it's like physics. It's real simple. He compared it to alcoholism. Right. I always like that argument. Yeah. That the the problem while you're while it's happening you think it's fine yeah but then once you st you need the only way to stop it is to actually stop actually stop and yeah. and, 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 and then enjoy you your the, hangover you get right. the shakes and the and we're, we're, and we're, we're, we have a we have a Fed right now which all of a sudden woke up and figured out oh wow we have is this trend this Wait, we cost thing, we cost inflation no, they didn't say, stop they've it. never no, said they, we they would never it. admit they've that they've never admitted that 40% they, of the they, currency they, in circulation was created in 2 years yeah they figured out that this is at 0% interest who did that uh, the fed <laughs> the the the, the uh, and what were they? The and Fed the, but was supposed saying, to prevent this kind of stuff, folks. Saying, That's Bernanke, what they say. I'm sorry, uh, uh, Jerome Powell was saying this is transitory. It's all due to supply yeah. chain, whatever. So is life, folks. It's and transitory. <laughs> Finally, he admitted, "Well, oh, that's not transitory after all. It's 9.1 percent CPI, and that's, oh, that's understating, way understating that. inflation. The uh, producer price index is way higher. That's what uh, predicts what future inflation is going to be. We have uh, a uh, an inflation problem that's going to be going on. It's going to go up. It's going to go down. It's going to go up. It's going to go down. But it's going to be a big problem for probably a decade or more." Mm. And there's not a damn thing that the uh, Fed can do about it at this point, other than cause a very, very severe recession, recession right. which has happened, which brings up the whole uh, sleight of word on whether we're in a recession or well, not. Come on. If it was the Republican president, the dictionary we'd definition be in a recession. of a recession is two quarters of economic decline and of GDP decline. Now you've got a spokesman from the Biden administration, and I put quotes on Biden administration because it's not Biden, it's a bunch of technocrats ar around him. They're saying, well, no, no, this is not a recession. There's not a recession until- you know, It was Trump in power, it'd be a horrible well, recession. Uh, whatever, it doesn't make any difference. The New York Times would have called him on a long yeah. time ago. The point is, they, can't, they are going to either cause a very, very severe recession we're starting to see it now. That's why credit card debt is going up. Right. People are trying to maintain their standard of living. They've kind of figured out that they like going out to dinner. They kind of like travel. They kind of like being able to buy a house. Uh, they kind of like being able to afford to pay rent. All of these things are, go are rising in price. They like their and $300 the only a month way cable that bill. they can continue to maintain their current standard of living is by putting it on the card. That's why credit card is go debt is going up. And it's going to continue to go up, and uh, the Fed will, is in a quandary right now. Jerome Powell has absolutely no idea what to do. Do I keep raising interest rates and and and, and, and do quantitative tightening, 
to cause a, a recession, which will ultimately lead to a recession? Or do I say, mm, let's pause it for a while, in which case inflation will just take off again. It's going to be a stop-start thing, probably. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's not a pretty picture. Uh, we're, we're kind of reliving the 1920s right now. Mm -hmm. uh, well, if, yeah, yeah. A lot of people predicted the roaring 20s coming out of the COVID lockdown. But then the, the, uh, instead of tightening up um, Biden's crew of <coughs> lunatic monetarists, uh, just printed more money, and they spent more money and printed more money, and, and now they want to raise taxes into the teeth of a recession. Uh, they're just, they're crazy. They be crazy, folks, and you keep electing them. I don't vote for these fools. Somewhere out there, and the people, there are hundreds of thousands of viewers. That's a little joke. We don't have 100,000 viewers. I don't well, and the, and the other thing is, yeah. this is bipartisan. They don't vote. It's bipartisan. We, you know, we can We're rail, against, and the blame rail against Biden as much as we mm -hmm. want, but it started under Trump. Yeah. And really, it started under Nixon. Yeah. Or if you want to get get right down to it, it started FDR. under Wilson. I'd say I always end up at Woodrow Wilson. Yeah, I'm like, exactly. well, what's the problem with inflation? Well, it's not really just Biden, it's Trump. But it's not really Trump, it's Obama. But it's not really Obama. It goes back to Wilson. It's, it goes back to 1913. And then you just work your way all the way back, and you're yeah. like, it's all Woodrow Wilson's fault. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. yeah. Well, he's in the grave. So well, I've done my rant. Yeah, That's yeah. yeah. Well, I'm 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 fixing to. And, rant and you know, there's on, kind of a, a parallel between Wilson and Biden. Both of them were essentially. Well, Wilson was, I think, nearly comatose while he was serving as uh, as president. And I'll let you fill in the blank. Mm. No, I'll. I'll uh, I and you know what's funny is that there there are some. There are some people who, who firmly believe, and I chat with them, because I chat with some strange folks at coffee houses, people. Um, I go to coffee houses to write, and there are a lot of people who call themselves liberals. They're not liberals. If you look up the classic definition of liberal, it's pretty much libertarian. What they are is socialists, and, and they're, they are naive. They are self-delusional because I was chatting with one of them. She says, oh, no, he's not. He's a really, really smart man. He's just got a speech impediment. He's always had a speech impediment, talking about Biden. Now, um, Trump, in all this craziness, actually took a competence test because, you know, he, he knew, I think he knows he's crazy, but he also knows he's smart, and he knows his brain was all there. I would challenge um, Biden to take that same kind of test, but the only problem is then if he's found incompetent, we'd end up with a uh, woman who should have been convicted of murder, uh, which is Kamala Harris, who withheld exculpatory evidence in some capital crimes. And then if she can't run it, you got Nancy Pelosi, who uh, I'm pretty much convinced uh, had somebody open the doors to uh, uh, to Congress to let people in because it'd make a good sound bite. Um, there is video. There is videotape of all that, folks. Where is it? That is one of the the most highly videotaped buildings on the planet. Where's the videotape showing exactly who opened those doors? Because those doors will literally stop a tank. Literally, that's what they're designed for. So they got to be open from the inside. But I'm getting on my rant. Let's talk about Nancy. Well, Nancy yeah. goes to Taiwan. That sounds like a travel documentary from the 50s. So. The funny thing about Nancy Pelosi is kind of there's something funny about it. Well, her? the next story that you have under there, the, the the trip to Taiwan just seems like she's going to go talk to people that she's invested with. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, some of the greatest investors get, uh, I mean, 22 percent, 24 percent, up to 28 percent. She gets like 69 percent. You talking about return on investment? Yeah, ROI on yeah. yeah it's it's in, it's like. It measures the greatest investor but of all time. When we say time. Nancy, we're really talking about Paul. Right, right, right. right. Okay. But, by, but yeah. how, how does he know all that stuff? Yeah. The timing is impeccable. Yeah. Uh, no, it's but way well, he invested in, in, in NVIDIA uh, options, and in Presto Changeo, we have a uh, multi billion dollar, who knows how much, how many billions it will be ultimately, uh, subsidy, bailout, they don't even need bailing out, they're doing just, you know, Intel and NVIDIA. And that, the rest is, of that is a horrible we're, crime, we're corporate welfare. Oh Why, let's talk, throw that in, this Nancy Pelosi goes to Taiwan. Well, how much money do you, did it end up causing, costing for her to go over there was in the millions? 
Yeah. Oh, you're talking about just for the, the planes and just, the security. Just for, yeah. yeah. Just just for her to go over there was yeah. in the millions. Yeah. And then China closed all their airspace and started doing naval warfare games and all kinds of crazy shit. Like, you, if you are millions looking for and millions of dollars were spent by two governments for no reason. 11 million people followed her flight on Flight Tracker. 11 million people If you're people looking for her. And nobody something took shot. that... You know, rivals, three minutes, folks. rivals the Archduke of uh, of uh, Archduke Ferdinand, the, the triggered you know who's assassinated, triggered uh, World War One. Nancy going to Taiwan kind of fills the bill. It's we are, it's we like are, it should be a are, Nancy Drew story. Nancy goes to Taiwan. Nancy we goes are, to Taiwan. We are toying with escalation toward nuclear warfare. Yeah, between Nancy going to Taiwan and our unquestioned support of Ukraine against Russia. We are corrupt, toying corrupt. with, and, and Hunter Biden had dealings in both of those countries. Huh. That's, that's strange. Imagine that. Yeah. Strange um, cool how, about, how about the next topic we talk about is Hunter goes to jail. Um, anyway, and uh, Hunter and Uncle Joe, or the big guy we talked, we're gonna, we're gonna close with something that Richard uh, added. Uh, there's now an investment advisory that tracks what Congress critters you're very kind in calling them critters and not uh, amoeba or whatever, are trading in to issue recommendations. It's a uh, uh, URL, blah, 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 capitaltrades.com. You want to talk about that a little well, yeah, bit? Yeah, it's, it's real simple. I mean, they just say uh, it, when, when a congressman invests in a, uh, in a country like Nancy did in NVIDIA, or her husband did, mm -hmm. it is eventually public knowledge, mm -hmm. you know, fairly quickly after the fact that the trade takes place. She's supposed to report it. They, they, they do. They, yeah. they report it. It's, it's after the fact, but yeah. they report it. And the track record, the, the, the investment track record, as you pointed out, of, of congressmen is extremely lucrative. They do very, very well yeah. because they obviously know what legislation is actually going to get passed that will have positive impacts on various mm -hmm. crony capitalist com uh, companies. Crony socialist. And crony is the is the. It's uh, called crony socialist. Crony socialist. Whatever. Capitalism is good. All right. So now, that, on that that note. now there's a web server, a, a website, and and an investment advisory that they said, okay, let's just follow up. Yeah, we're not we're not plugging these folks, but it's capitaltrades.com. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, our viewers, our wonderful viewers, thank you so much. Thank you, Zach. Thank Zach you. and Cade. Richard Fields, no middle name. I know that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, John Alexander Cameron, uh, and you don't need to know that, but I do have a middle name. So uh, I want to thank you very much for watching and, and let you know that uh, you can see us on YouTube. Uh, yes, they still have us on YouTube. They haven't locked us out recently, all they do on occasion. Uh, we're, we're on... Uh, uh, Public access uh, TV in, in Sacramento at 8 o'clock on Thursdays, 4 o'clock in the morning on Saturdays, and I think I might be speaking to dead air. And if not, we're on other time. So uh, support Access Sacramento, folks. Uh, you know, it's, it sounds like we're talking out of both sides of our face here because, um, you know, we're libertarians and, and hate, uh, you know, the idea of government getting involved in things. But... Access Sacramento allows us to have a voice, uh, and it's good that you uh, you get to listen to people who are uh, relatively rational as well as uh, some of the irrational, i.e., all the newspapers. Uh, my 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 newspaper stock, the dead cat bounces no more. Yeah, it's uh, it hasn't I done very well. Up, right. So um, I wish we had some of the. Uh, some of the actual trades from members of Congress that we could put up, uh, you know, on the board and show people. Okay. Um, they had it on Twitter for a while, but it kept getting removed. Huh, imagine I wonder that. why. I think we've got a little bit more time, folks. Uh, I want to apologize, ladies and gentlemen. We're working, uh, we're working. Okay, we're still live. We're, we're working on a skeleton crew here, and uh, they aren't really skeletons, but there's way fewer of them than we normally had. And they're volunteers, and uh, so, you know, occasionally we, we will be talking uh, when the show is not on and not talking when the show is on. And this is me filling in. So we've gone over some very interesting things, hiding the Forest Service, hiding uh, one of the greatest draws it should have because they don't want to build a footbridge because they hate people. Uh, us executing someone in a foreign country who uh, never had a trial, 
and killing a bunch of innocents to do it. Surge in credit card debt because people got used to all that free money and, and were living past their means and now they're trying to catch up. Uh, Nancy goes to Taiwan. It still sounds like it should be like a Nancy Drew mystery. 